name is Anita Onuko. I'm your host for the show. The show is brought to you courtesy of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. And the aim of the show is to educate you, to inform you, and to allow us to have a conversation about the law and what the law says about, about you when you may be in conflict or in contact with the law. So I welcome you to engage. I welcome you to follow us on our YouTube channel at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions Kenya. Uh, we're on Facebook at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions Kenya as well. And on uh, Twitter at ODPP underscore KE. Karibu sana, engage, ask questions. Let's know where you're watching or listening from. And of course, invite a friend to invite a friend to subscribe and follow us on our social media platforms. I bet you've learned enough. This must be the 63rd episode of this show and there's so much on youtube and on facebook that you can still go back and listen to and get to understand what the law says so um as always we start with a highlight of the courts before we get to introducing our guests and uh before we go we normally say it's not exhaustive a lot has happened this week especially and if you've been following on facebook and twitter then I know you're well caught up with what has been happening in the news. So I will try and just highlight the cases that maybe, maybe you didn't get, but again, not exhaustive. Maybe you missed it, but not exhaustive. I keep giving that disclaimer so that you don't expect a whole, a whole uh, rundown of the courts. So I will start with the first story. And it's about uh, this teacher who has been sentenced. Um, let me just get it. So a teacher was jailed for life um, because of defilement. Um, a teacher at a private school in Nairobi who lured a 10-year-old girl to his house before defiling her has been jailed for life by a Kibera court. James Mawanda was handed the sentence on Wednesday by Kibera Chief Magistrate Ann Mwangi after the prosecution proved the offense. So this guy has been jailed for life for defilement. And this case happened uh, a while back. Um... The prosecution told the court that the accused person committed the offense on diverse dates between August 2018 and 2019 in Kibera, Katwekere area within Nairobi County. So while passing the sentence, the magistrate said that he, the offense was barbaric, considering that the victim was a minor. So um, as always, this guy has the right to appeal, so he's been given 14 days to appeal the judgment. So the next case we have is about um, a story from Eldoret, quite a sad one as uh, it also involves a juvenile. So a 14-year-old boy was charged with killing his 27-year-old brother-in-law in, in Moise Bridge, was in Gishu County on Wednesday, October 12th. He appeared before Eldoret judge uh, Eric Ogola and applied to be released on bond. The boy said to have stabbed his brother-in-law with a kitchen knife as he attempted to separate the deceased from his sister as a photo of a glass of Chang'a. So this happened in Eldoret, and uh, the, it, it involves a 14-year-old child. Through his lawyer, the boy told the court that a probation report had confirmed that he had no criminal record, and his life would not be in danger if released on bond. Justice Ogola directed that the boy be detained at the Eldoret Juvenile Remand Home, pending a ruling on his bond request. The case will be mentioned again on 17th November, and uh, I think uh, there's going to be further directions after that. So part of the highlights we give are those things that have taken place at the ODPP, some functions here and there, and we have three that took place this week. Uh, the first one I want to highlight is uh, SGBV training that took place in Naivasha. With the support of our guests, actually, the support of UNODC, uh, plead as well. <laughs> so it was a, a TOT uh, course for SGBV, uh, focal persons at the Great Rift Valley Lodge in Naivasha this week. I believe it's still ongoing, right? Yes, yes it's still ongoing. Uh, the SGBV division, uh, with the support of UNODC, plead continues with its training course for SGBV, the focal persons uh, in Naivasha this week. So that's continuing, and maybe we'll get to know a bit more about that from our guests because they are the main sponsors. From, <laughs> from UNODC. And the other event at ODPP was uh, the DPP launched a workshop at PTI this week for prosecutors and judicial officers, uh, judicial officers on strengthening the response to terrorism financing. Uh, the aim is to develop and recognize the importance of investigations and the associated use of legislation and evidence derived. So this again was one of those that happened at the ODPP this week. Uh, the other one, 
quickly uh, because we are actually run out, running out of time. But the last one uh, on the highlights is again another event at the ODPP. So this week again, uh, the DPP launched a performance management system uh, on October 11th this week. Um, with the, a the aim of the system is to increase the agency's level of professionalism and capacity building. The office intends to make use of ICT in order to enhance equity and equality in its human resource development and management processes. So um, when I, what I got from this is that now going forward, data everything will be data driven, promotions, training, and all those things. Remember, ODPP is trying to is is striving to be a twenty first century prosecution service, and this is now part of uh, one of those initiatives. So this was done in conjunction and in partnership with Lawyers Without Borders. And of course, uh, they say that it is going to allow the organization to evaluate its performance and impact using innovative and conventional system features. The system has very nice features while engaging in continuous performance tracking. I think that's a plus for a government agency. I don't know what you think, but I think it's a good thing. So back to our show. And I want to allow our guests to introduce themselves. Uh, we want to talk about partnerships, we want to talk about collaboration, and of course how state and non-state actors come together. When they come together, there's magic. You see a lot of things happening, and today that is one of the discussions we are going to have. So we want to know more about PLEAD and the initiative uh, by UNODC and how they partner with the ODPP. So I won't talk much. I want to first start with Joy. Can you go to the show? Round Thank one. You. This is round one. Yes. There also should be round, many other rounds. Yes. So kindly introduce yourself. Thank you, Anita. Yeah. My name is Joy Matara, and I work with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime in, based in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And I work for the PLEAD program, and I've been managing the ODPP portfolio, so it's a real honor to be here. So, so define what PLEAD is. I'm tell us the ac <laughs> acronym. What does it mean? <laughs> so PLEAD is an abbreviation of the program for legal empowerment and aid delivery in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. So. P L E A D. A D. Yes. So this is plead one. This is plead one. Yeah. And we are praying and hoping, and we've been investing for a plead to a transition into plead two. I like the way we pray that. Karibu to the charity. Thank you. Yes. Karibu to the show, Joy. Karibu charity. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm Charity Kagwendongo. Mm -hmm. I'm head of the Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice Program at UNODC, mm -hmm. under which the plead program forms. Mm -hmm. Um, Joy, of course, is our contact person, your day-to-day -day contact person here at ODPP. Mm -hmm. But um, UNODC is the office, uh, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Mm -hmm. And our main area looks at crime prevention, uh, also just making sure that uh, criminal justice um, mm -hmm. institutions are strengthened mm -hmm. across the board. That is the mandate of UNODC. Mm -hmm. um, through the family of nations. Yeah. Most people don't understand it, yes. but it's, it's not just about drugs, it's about yeah. crime prevention and criminal justice. I just uh, want to ask about drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drugs are yeah. important, but yeah. uh, it's, it's uh, a wider mandate on crime prevention and criminal justice. Okay. Yeah. How long has UNODC operated in Kenya? I, um, it's, it should be, uh, I think we started in 2009. No, okay. I, I am, yeah, Maybe correct. 15, 15 mm -hmm. now. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, the rest of us, of course, we've joined in at different times. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but we have a, a regional office. So the regional office at, is at Gigiri. Okay. Um, and we cover 13 countries. Oh, wow. But uh, the PLEA program mm -hmm. is the largest um, criminal justice program, mm -hmm. uh, I think, in the whole of Africa yeah. that has been funded yes. by the EU. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, um, it, it aims at having a, a great impact, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to work on the criminal justice institutions. Yeah. Uh, yes. Karim, mm -hmm. to the show. Asante. I hope you're praying for Fleet too as well. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, Linda is not a new face, but kindly introduce yourself, Linda. Okay, thank yeah. you, Anita. Uh, my name is Linda Dambiri uh, from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. Mm -hmm. I'm a Principal Prosecution Counsel and I am in the Children Division under the wider Conventional and Related mm -hmm. Crimes uh, Department. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to be here today. Karibu sana, Linda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe Charity, to start with you, uh, what made Kenya a beneficiary of this play program? So um, it's, it's, it's not been, um, it's actually been a long journey. And I think mm -hmm. one of the key areas that started was the 2010 mm -hmm. constitution. I think mm -hmm. um, Kenya has one of the, um, I think, most far-reaching, very um, 
innovative uh, constitution that has mm. so many rights that have been conferred. It's very um, modern constitution. And mm. once the constitution was launched, um, it brought so much hope that this is a country that, um, that, that, needed, that needed and was ready for the support to strengthen the justice institutions. As you're well aware, after the 2007 um, you know, yeah, post-election violence, it was seen that you know, the country will be as strong as its justice institutions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, with um, plead, um, there was a lot of discussions. There were new offices that had been formed. Remember, DPP's office used to be with the AGs. Yes. It was now, it's now an independent office. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, uh, new initiatives came up. Mm -hmm. And the PLEAD uh, mm -hmm. program was supposed to support this process, yeah. support the growth. Yeah. But let's also note that Kenya is the biggest economy in Eastern Africa. Yeah. Greatest, um, has I think the 40% GDP yeah. of Eastern Africa. Yeah. Yeah still the biggest market mm. an impact in kenya and a strengthened kenya is a strengthened um region, uh, region. region yes. Yes. yes yes so it was very important that we make sure that we support a strengthened kenya it made me feel mm. so proud of what you see in the national <laughs> <laughs> About Kenya. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. I mm. think we've come a long way with our constitution. Mm. Yes. I think the last elections proves that what you've said, Amazing, we're as good yeah. as our justice yes. uh, institutions. Yeah. Yeah. And we've really come a long way. I hope mm. you're going far with this. Yeah, we, yeah. we are actually, uh, I think that was one of the, the key areas we, we've seen so much growth um, as mm. we've, uh, we, we were really lucky to support um, the justice institutions between the two elections, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 2013 and 2020. So you have a story to tell. Yes, <laughs> we do. We, we walk the journey with the justice. You know, As you know, we, we, we support um, other institutions, the yeah. judiciary. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and we also did offer support to the National Council of Administration mm -hmm. of Justice. Yeah. And we, see, we, we were so happy to see the justice sector come together and um, you know, give Kenyans confidence yeah. that all is going it's to well. be well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that an election does not mean that the country falls apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have learned. We have yes. we have yes. grown up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. can say we are maturing in this piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So then back again to you, Joy. Yes. So what has been done? What are some of the initiatives you've you partnered with with the ODPP? Yes. Yeah. Um, I know you've asked about the ODPP, but allow me to just say that for PLEAD 1, we have partnered with five institutions in the justice sector, and yeah. I can quickly run through them. Yes, yes. We've partnered with the ODPP, with the Judiciary, Probation and Aftercare Service, Witness Protection Agency, as mm -hmm. well as the Umbrella Body, which is the National Council on Administration of Justice, yeah. NCJ. Yeah. And um, we have tried to ensure that all these justice actors work together for the benefit of Onjiko, for mm. the benefit of morale, whoever it is. Yeah? Yeah. So that uh, whatever interventions we do has an effect. For instance, whatever intervention we do with the ODPP has an effect to the other, yeah. to the other agencies. It's an ecosystem. It's right? an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It feeds and speaks to each other. Yeah. We have done quite a number of interventions. Mm -hmm. um, ranging from uh, interventions that uh, uh, operationalize alternatives to prosecutions, alternatives to trial, mm -hmm. and that is diversion and plea bargaining. Yeah. I'm sure before you have uh, heard guests speak about yes. diversion. Yeah. And uh, for us, we, we, we are very confident that uh, Whatever we brought to the table like, regarding diversion being novel because prose prosecutor-led diversion never used to exist in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. And therefore, with the partnership that PLEAD had with uh, the ODPP, we were able to develop the policy and to develop the guidelines. Yeah. I, I can just show you quickly the policy and the guidelines. This diversion is what we, what we developed, oh, yes. Yeah. And the guidelines are for the prosecutors to tell them the what, how, when yeah. about diversion. Yeah. And diversion is a very powerful tool because mm -hmm. it helps the, the offender not to have a, uh, you know, not to have a criminal record. And uh, diversion is mostly applicable for people who are vulnerable, like mm -hmm. our children, our old people. And it diverts just mm -hmm. the, the way it treats. It diverts cases from, as opposed to them clogging our system. It, we, we are able to divert them from the official criminal justice mm. system to other ways. Yeah. And, and we need to move away from retributive justice to restorative justice. Yeah. Yeah? And that is what diversion is able to do. It gives a second chance to people. Mm -hmm. uh, something, so we've also developed a lot of IEC material in English, in Swahili, yeah. 
in um in sign language etc what is this this one uh, which Ombila? one which one that one this one yeah. ombila kujadiliana kuhusu kesi this is plea bargaining and i'll speak about it so plea bargaining swahili is hard yes. but uh we really tried to it's to unpack <laughs> We've really tried to unpack so that whoever understands English can speak English, yeah. whoever understands Swahili. And these fact sheets, we've printed hundreds of thousands. And we hope they can, and they're also on the website for the ODPP, I yeah. believe. They can be disseminated across so that it's people can public, know. For it's for public consumption. Okay. We have used illustrations to mm. just show what exactly this is. Yeah. When am I eligible? It is yeah. ATC. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we we hope it will reach the masses. Yeah. Yeah. So another intervention we have done is play bargaining. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have partnered with other other development partners, yeah. partnering also with the ODPP, yeah. and we have undertaken a lot of training as well. So yeah. plea bargaining, uh, again, is one of the alternatives yeah. uh, to imprisonment, so that uh, if a case can be, you know, you can negotiate and come up with a plea agreement, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to go through the entire system. Yeah. Seven years clogging our, you know, our cases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have also worked with children, and mm. I, I think uh, Linda will speak a lot yeah. more, but has played uh, with the support of the European Union. We have uh, also come up with the children's guideline. It's, yeah. It has a long name, but we call it the children guideline. We have developed... Um, you know, fans catch books ah, so that when children. a child, when a child, for instance, is in court, as opposed to them being bored and listening into other cases, yeah. they can be able to fill in this. You know, yeah. these are just things to keep the child busy That's to good. ensure that the their mental state is kept. You know, yeah, they they intact. they're, they're intact, yeah, yeah, so that they don't get overwhelmed with all these yeah. judicial processes. Okay. Um, a lot of IC material has also been developed. Mm -hmm. Allow me to speak about the rapid reference guide. Sorry, I came with a lot of my <laughs> some of our publications. <laughs> this is a guide for prosecutors on SGBV cases, okay. sexual and gender-based cases. Yeah. Because if you remember during the 207-208 uh, post-election violence, yeah. a lot of SGBV cases did not uh, were not successfully prosecuted. Yeah. The, the convictions were low. Mm -hmm. And uh, the High Court got to make a ruling and say that um, we need to interrogate how we investigate, yeah. how we prosecute, how we adjudicate SGBV mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, as uh, the ODPP, a request came through to us uh, as plead to support, come up with the, you know, just breaking down yeah. what cases should be, how cases should be handled, mm -hmm. uh, what laws should be, we should make reference to, yeah. what are the ingredients. So that when you look at it, when a prosecutor is, uh, you know, uh, endorsing the charges, the charge sheets, when a prosecutor is in court prosecuting, they can quickly make a reference. And something mm -hmm. good about this, the online version has hyperlinks. Okay. We worked with the ODPP and we came up with hyperlinks so that when you're saying section 80 of the Sexual Offenses Act, all you need to do while in court standing, mm -hmm. you click. Um. If you want to make reference to a case, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, whether domestic case or international or regional, because we also make reference to, yeah. you know, those cases at the click of a button you can go to that same paragraph to that paragraph on the thing you wanted to speak mm. about so it's it a very opens. friendly yeah. it's a very useful tool okay we've worked with the prosecution training institutes mm. i did not carry my the <laughs> curriculum it's a <laughs> big <laughs> I always work with my tools <laughs> of trade, yeah? Right. A very big 500-page one-year induction curriculum, okay, yeah. which uh, will, will, the ODPP will use, the Prosecution Training Institute will use to, you know, induct and make, make their, their inductees, the newly recruited uh, prosecutors, yeah. 21st century prosecutors, yeah. you know, service, to yeah. service, yeah, yeah, to be able to offer those services. Yeah. We've done a lot of other works, change yeah. management, business processes mm -hmm. and all this that we are doing is anchored in the excellence charter yes the excellence charter is the blueprint strategic blueprint for the odpp mm -hmm. and this is a very unique document because mm -hmm. when you look across all other government agencies we've never had uh, it's novel we've mm -hmm. never had a government agency come up with their an excellence charter yeah. it's it's a strategic plan but with a lens of transformation that cuts across yeah. and like the many big for those who work with government mm -hmm. like i have strategic plans used to be this yeah. big. this one is short and to brief and to the point yeah. and it speaks to the needs of the prosecutors mm -hmm. 
UNODC, through the support of VU and working with ODPP, we were able to come up with that excellence charter. It's almost about to lapse, but yeah. uh, we will be supporting in the next phase of the excellence charter. Yeah. So um, maybe, Charity, you can pick on other interventions that yeah. I haven't spoken yeah. about. Yeah. Equipment, no, no, it's actually, equipment maybe. Yeah. You've actually mm -hmm. covered quite a lot. Yes. Um, but uh, just, just to really add uh, on the ex excellence charter, it really was mm -hmm. the vision of the DPP. Yeah. Uh, and his promise to Kenya yeah. when yeah. he yeah. took office yes. mm -hmm. that he was he wanted to retool, recast, and relapse, yes. and and yes. just um, just transform the office. And mm -hmm. we, we we really have been very happy partners yeah. for you, and mm -hmm. and and really to emphasize what Joy said that mm -hmm. um, it's an EU funded project. Okay. Yes. So this really falls within the EU strategic um, vision yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. 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 and uh, and uh, we're, we're very um, grateful for the EU support on yeah. the justice system and the face. Yeah. In, in in the in the system because it's quite a huge investment uh, um, that they have uh, yeah, given. Right. I think it's mm. four billion. It's it, it, it's it's uh, a thirty four. 34.15 million okay. euros, but that translates to about 4.2 billion Kenya, Kenya shillings. shillings. Mm. Quite quite, big, it's quite quite the largest, as yeah. Charity has mm. said, it's yeah. the largest in Sub-Saharan Africa. It mm. makes us feel special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it goes yeah. across like all, all, all the, the justice, justice sector. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. so one of the things that, of course, was noticed is the, the, the need mm. for equipment. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And and it, it, uh, you know the prosecutor needs their tools in in, in court. So you mean now, computers? You see, yeah. yes. Lots. Now that um, we're in a digital age, yeah. uh, everybody mm -hmm. walks around with their computer. So mm -hmm. that was one of the things that we supplemented mm -hmm. in support of um, um, you know your work. Okay. Mm -hmm. We also did quite a bit of um, uh, support on printers, you oh, know, right. just things that would make that your make life, life easy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most Efficiency. Yeah. Most exactly. recently in Garissa and those far uh, far areas, mm -hmm. we we uh, uh, provided a few cars to help prosecutors. You yeah. know how far you have to mm -hmm. travel in yeah. those areas. And of course, I think uh, the, uh, Joy's pet project was the boat in Lamu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the boat in Via Deal. And Via Deal yeah. is the yeah. single most expensive investment in terms of equipment that we have purchased yeah. so far. Yeah. Yeah. And it has really helped people in Lamu. Right. It has changed how you know uh, business is run yeah. in Lamu. And it's, it's in as much as it's uh, housed and uh, it's the property now of ODPP, mm -hmm. you have accommodated all other justice, justice actors. actors. So yeah. the judiciary, the probation, etc. You sure the boat to yes. go to go do <laughs> yeah. the mobile court in the yeah. islands. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. Good. yeah. I think yeah. with all these things you're saying, these novel things, I'm about to say, or oh, the needs to change from hacking or Osama to <laughs> you know that thing in Akamba bus services is a way yeah. back. We need other follow. It's close to bus. <laughs> But yes, yeah. you lead. Yes. Yeah, yeah de definitely. Yeah, yeah. You, you've been yes. a very good partner yes. in the last five years as mm -hmm. we've worked mm -hmm. with you. It's yes. been a, a great pleasure, you know, seeing mm -hmm. just how the prosecutors are ready to yeah. learn. You yeah. know, it was a transformative time. You know, mm -hmm. moving away prosecutions from police from the AG, yeah. yes. to to um, to prosecutors, yeah. every single case yeah. being handled yeah. by a prosecutor, yeah. Yeah. and then just seeing the office growing this way uh, yes. has been very amazing. Some and good change. And very good really to good. work with you. Yeah, yeah. independent. Yeah. Yes. So, Linda, we took our ground. Earlier on, we were talking about the version yeah. with Linda, actually. Oh, that okay. case of the juvenile in Eldoret who yes. was accused of killing his brother-in-law. Yeah. Yes, and Linda was mm. saying they need to... They needed to use the version. Maybe plea bargaining. Plea bargaining. Plea bargaining, yeah. Yeah. Plea bargaining yeah. in the matter. Yes. Yeah. Actually, to say maybe we took our ground in a different. Mm -hmm. uh, we have really... I hope in a good way. In a good way, oh, yeah. yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, we'll yes. see their face. We said that. We took our ground in a different, in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we took our ground in a different, in a good way. Yeah. We have seen the impact of these documents. Yeah. As you've said, they really mm -hmm. supported us in a lot of policy documents, yeah. mm -hmm. capacity building. And uh, in terms of policy documents, of course, we cannot run away from diversion. Yeah. Diversion yeah. has been, we, we can see as ODPP, we are now trailblazers. Mm -hmm. Others are mm -hmm. actually following us. Mm -hmm. We led the conversation about diversion mm -hmm. because I remember when we joined as uh, very young prosecutors, it mm -hmm. was just a concept mm -hmm. that was being forwarded in every training you go. If mm -hmm. you want to do something on, on alternatives, mm -hmm. diversion was being spoken about. But as ODPP, mm -hmm. with collaboration from UNODC, it's now something that we're actually doing on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, Who and does the inversion benefit in, in your practice? In, it actually benefits, um, it's, a, it's a cross board. Mm -hmm. 
number one, one of the biggest beneficiaries, of course, has to be children. Children who are in mm -hmm. conflict with the law. Yeah. I can tell you stories here about the mm -hmm. impact we've seen. Children who have gotten out of the system. I have one who, it was a preparation to commit a felony, he had a, a, a gun. And right now he's actually going to do his exams, national exams, this November. And the, 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 when you talk about rehabilitation yeah. and reintegration, mm. you see impact because families are being reconciled to each other. Mm -hmm. We talk about the vulnerable, the very old, the, the elderly. Why would you, if it's a stealing case for an elderly person, why would mm. we want to get them through the system? Yeah. And maybe there's social yeah. support services yeah. mm -hmm. we can connect them to through either the ministry or the chiefs. Mm -hmm. Why can't we as ODPP lead that? We have mm -hmm. to take everything to court. Yeah. So it's a, it's when we say we are relearning even how to prosecute, mm -hmm. we it's with our mandate, it's not just mm -hmm. taking everything to court, but relearning how to uh, bring about access to justice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we, we also have the people with mental disability. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had for the longest time people languishing at Mathare, mm -hmm. uh, the National Referral Hospital. Mm -hmm. And some of these cases are just cases where maybe these people have people in their community who can take care of them. Mm -hmm and maybe and follow-ups from uh, other justice sector yeah. se sector players. And the good thing about diversion is also it has brought about all agencies. We are now working together. Yeah. Uh, of course, I can't, I can't do everything as yeah. a prosecutor, <laughs> yeah. of course. True. Yesterday we had a case of a child who, a 14-year-old, mm. the issue, he was stealing, but the issue was family support. And we got the children officer to take now that case. And they're offering not just family supervision, but they're also offering psychosocial support so we brought now all it's a multi-agency yeah. uh, support which has been led by the ODPP with a yeah. uh, collaboration from the UNODC yeah. we now also have the prosecutor's guide to children mm -hmm. uh, we, we know that children cases are complex mm -hmm. isn't it they're sensitive mm -hmm. even as we see this, you do it. The, this, <laughs> this fun sketchbook by the yeah. time you try to build rapport with a child oh yes. my god yeah. you'll have to you have to True. go to their level yeah. Yeah? yeah and we have to be uh, guided by the constitution where it says best interest of the child so it doesn't just say prosecutor does this or press it's best what is in the best interest of the child and with yes. this now guide it's an easy to it's an easy reference to for a prosecutor yeah. Yeah. especially even as you join, let's say you've not been trained on, on handling children, you get to the book, mm. you can see how is it that I can, I can, I can yeah. do with yeah. regards to the different subsets of children yeah. who come into the justice yeah. system. Yeah. We also now uh, have the SGBV, Rapid Reference Guide, yeah. very good because it doesn't just guide us, it also guides investigators mm. because it's, it contains ingredients what to look out for for every specific offense let's say defilement what are the ingredients yeah. what do you would you require as evidence mm -hmm. so it's so easy even when you're making the decision to charge you can just refer to your rapid reference guide you ask where the investigator way is one two three four five and at least now you make sure your evidence is watertight yeah. Yeah. and also in terms of another support that UNODC is also offering us we are now having the child friendly interview spaces. Oh your favorite yes. Yes. <laughs> yes my favorite one of the, the, the things. Yeah. Because when you say you're rethinking prosecution you and you have to look at all the tools at your disposal. Yeah. And one of them is um, technology. How are we leveraging on technology? Yeah. And that is one of the things now we, we are trying, the judiciary has uh, has really given prominence to technology. Mm -hmm. And with these rooms now we are saying, instead of having children even go to the, to the mm -hmm. courts and mm -hmm. ha and see all these things the way, mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. whether you've gone to court, Anita, and you've seen, you've seen people <laughs> trembling <laughs> when they come as witnesses, yeah? I think I also so tremble. <laughs> So you can imagine yeah. a child coming yeah. into into the courts. Yeah. Uh, how how it how it is intimidating yeah. it is for yeah. the child. So how can we maybe uh, link up with the courts through use of technology yeah. in yeah. the room? How can we get access to these mm -hmm. uh, other support services like psychologists to come and help us even as we are doing the rapport mm -hmm. building? Even in terms of evidence, can we rethink how we present this evidence to the court? Can it be pre-recorded? Mm -hmm. Can we, you know, we also have to build jurisprudence because mm -hmm. it's happening mm -hmm. globally. There are okay. those things that are actually, mm -hmm. so can we rethink how we also do yeah. uh, and build jurisprudence in some of these things? So the, the interview rooms and... They really they're supported, yeah, yes. they've really yes. supported us yeah, yes. in terms of that. Yeah. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I think there's a, there's a documentary you need to watch out for. 
BBC is meant to run it about SGBV mm -hmm. okay. and um, drought in uh, northeastern. Mm -hmm. So it has really gone up because of mm -hmm. there's a correlation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they've, they've done a very emotional story about that. Yes. Unfortunately, rise. SGBV cases always rise yeah. up whenever there's a crisis. There's a crisis. Mm -hmm. We saw what happened yeah. in COVID, yeah. you know, and that was another thing that we did. We yes. supported um, yeah. uh, uh, our guide, but that was for yeah. the police on investigation. Yeah. Yes. Every time there's a crisis, SGBV goes up. Yes. Yeah. 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 And women are vulnerable yeah. and yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Women and children, yeah. But I think that's why now we, we call on the justice institutions mm. to say, let's, let's not, um, uh, I think, have a um, knee-jerk reaction, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we we yeah. have some systems that work that, yeah. that keep yeah. both children and women uh, safe. safe. Yeah. 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 I don't know, when you talk um, about the CBB, sorry, yeah. Go ahead. The, the thing about safe houses comes up yeah. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Do we have a plan to have safe houses for SGBV? So, so, um, so one Another of the who should drive that? So one of the arms of of of, of plead uh, deals with civil society, yes. that is run by UNDP, and they do look at SGBV survivors, okay. mm -hmm. but also within witness protection. Yeah. They're, they're, and I think um, you know Joyce showed all this um, mm -hmm. IEC material. A lot of it has been put in police stations, mm -hmm. in the court, mm -hmm. in places where the public can say, "Oh, you know, I can do this." Yeah. So uh, WPA. Um, witness Protection Agency, mm -hmm. when I say WPA, sometimes yeah. people mm -hmm. might not understand. Mm -hmm. They do, if approached, can help support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because especially if it's an SGBV mm -hmm. uh, victim, mm -hmm. most likely you'll be giving evidence mm -hmm. against your guardian, yes. mm -hmm. which is a safe space for you. You know, yes. you're clearly not safe mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, or, or the rest of the family will blame you. I think we had a case where. Um, the girl was blaming the grandfather, mm -hmm. said the grandfather had, um, had defiled her, and her own mother turned against her and said, my father cannot do anything oh, like yeah. that, you mm -hmm. see. So you, you find that there's a lot of insecurity when it comes to these cases, and, and there needs to be a much more coordinated mm -hmm. yes, justice yeah. uh, approach yeah. towards yeah. matters like yeah. this. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I also like uh, maybe what um, UNODC probably is doing with the NCJ, mm -hmm. uh, because that drives the conversation yes. and with yes. that they can leverage also on yeah. things like um or people like the uh, governors county governments yeah. because yeah. some mm. of these things if you look at yeah. maybe the children's act rescue centers are supposed mm. to also be provided by uh, the county government yes. so yes. with leading this conversation yes. by UNODC yes. and NCAJ mm. it's something yeah. maybe they can advocate yeah. for yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to just something, yeah. yeah. I think we did not get to mention that uh, when plead one was being formulated, mm -hmm. focus was given to the historically marginalized communities because yeah. these are communities that um, for many years they've been neglected even within the justice system. And therefore, uh, seven of the 12 counties that we were focusing on under plead one uh, is, uh, you know, they were the marginalized, northeastern, yeah. coastal yeah. marginalized, including Lamu, Wajia, yeah. Gari, Satana River, ETC. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we have done quite a bit of work, maybe not enough, but we have really tried to also put our investment and our focus on those marginalized and ensure that the historic marginalization uh. gets to be reduced here. But, but you know, a small mm. caveat here. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> that the, we are, we, uh, you know, these things have taken a long time to grow. Yes. So I guess it, it's yes. not going to happen in a very short time. Yes. It's going to be sustained um, support yes. to this. So what yes. PLEAD does is support the um, institution, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. because uh, what will matter is the sustainability mm -hmm. of the things that have been developed. Yes. So while we have supported the marginalized counties, yes. it's got to be part of what the government says this is our, our, our priority, priority and yes. we push, because all we do is um, offer, I think we, what, we usually say we are like a midwife, yeah? <laughs> We Bus. support, <laughs> but the baby belongs to you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we don't keep the baby. Yeah, yeah. 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 It belongs to the government and the people of Kenya. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So we talk about alternatives to imprisonment, and it's quite a key focus in yeah. the area. Yeah. And I know it is beyond mm. just being kind from retribution to restoration. Yes. There's also the idea of uh, reducing the numbers in prison. Yes. What are yes. the numbers? Do you have any statistics that can give us their some indication yeah oh, okay so so th there is uh, we can't give you like a like a specific number yeah. it changes mm -hmm. you know uh, i mean your really prosecutors yeah. yeah in and out uh, it, it's really very difficult to say um, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the only thing we can tell you is that they're still over capacity mm. yeah and um maybe i'll say something and then, uh, and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um 
So, oh. no, Joy, just go ahead about COVID and then I can okay. add okay. on yeah. other things, yeah. So, uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic, when it was at, you know, at, at its climax, there was a lot of intervention by different agencies uh, under the NCAJ umbrella to ensure that we do not have pre-trial detainees because mm -hmm. when they are put in, you know, industrial area remand, they get to spread to each other and therefore there are directives by the NCAJ under the CJ's uh, leadership that any matter that needs to be diverted, let it be diverted at the very instant mm -hmm. so that people are not taken to remand. And that really saw a lot of, you know, a, quite a big reduction of pretrial detainees. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we cannot say that uh, those interventions continued to date mm -hmm. because those were stopgap measures because mm -hmm. of the COVID uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, we are building up. We are building up and mm. we are putting in place policies and strategies mm. that will cut across mm. uh, the different justice actors to ensure that at least the pretrial detainees uh, or detention numbers go down. Go down. And that yeah. was our one of our key goals under PID1, mm -hmm. that we have a 30% reduction of pretrial detainees. Okay. So uh, putting in place different measures, diversion, plea bargaining, alternative justice systems, yeah. etc., etc. Those are measures that will help reduce uh, cases, you know, people to go into prison mm. or to pre, pre um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But really, I, I also say, um, again, mm -hmm. uh, the justice institutions can do a lot. Yeah. But the community in general, yes. um, I, I think it comes back from our um, uh, colonial background, yeah. you know, that yeah. uh, we felt that you can only, you only pay your debt to society mm -hmm when you are behind the bars. Yes, mm. yes. It's like um, you sense. take your grandmother mm. to the hospital, mm. unless she's given an injection. <laughs> and then you come up with, with uh, if they tell her to take multivitamins, she'll oh. refuse, but you have a bag of um, medicine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, uh, there's, a, yeah. there's a mindset yes. Yes. Uh, with Kenyans. Mm. And and, uh, and and they say, no, this person mm. has done this, and they're back in the community. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And so um, I, I think it's, it's going to be, of course, the justice institutions, but there also yeah. has to be a mind, of course, yeah, change. A mind shift. We have to yes. understand, for example, if it's a mother yeah, who has been taken away, and let's say she's done a crime, um, mm. that, um, that mm. she deserves to, uh, you know, of course she has to pay. Yeah. And then yeah. the, the judge gives her a community service order. Yes. Yeah? So who benefits? Um, it is going to be the whole community because yes. she will now go and help the community, whatever it is. Yeah. It's, um, Clean toilet. Yes, yeah. she'll do that. Yeah. But she will not leave her children mm. unattended. Mm. If a mother is incarcerated, mm. we all know that that exposes her children. Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. So she will be home to take care of her yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. So we will, and then again, uh, you, you understand the whole community structure mm. that requires that everybody to, you know, mm. to put in. Um, mm what they what they're able to do mm -hmm. now I, I also say i sometimes i look at it and say what is the cost i think somebody talked about it yeah mm -hmm. what is the cost to the kenyans mm -hmm. yeah uh, the mm -hmm. food we are giving them mm -hmm. the, the the people who are protecting them mm -hmm. the, oh, uh, the, the the housing yeah. the what when we count the cost of what we are putting yeah. those people vis-a-vis yeah. vis -vis a, a community service yeah. we are uh we are really paying too much yeah, right? exactly. yeah? Okay. however exactly. these people could come back and actually do something for the yeah. community and for themselves yeah. and yes. for themselves yes. and it will reduce we, we know sometimes prison becomes a training yes. ground yes. Yeah? Yes. yeah you go you are a chicken thief you come out are you getting yeah. any shift in yeah. yes so yeah, so is, so yeah. um so the, the question is not to us yeah the question mm. is to, <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> and i think <laughs> <laughs> when i want to contribute is yeah. it yeah. Yeah. like yeah. i find yeah. we are so vindictive yeah. we just want to see people in i think i think with what we have we have been doing in terms of capacity building informing them what it is that we are doing as yeah. ODPP. We are not letting people scot free yes. and the mm. rest. So it's just, um, what is it called? Public engagement. Yes. We need a lot of that mm. and as what we are doing mm. right now. Yeah. Mm. What we've been done, we've been doing even mm. during our capacity building that yes. UNODC has been supporting. Mm. We used to go up to the judici judiciary. We mm. talked to 
uh, to say the accused persons, yeah. all the clients mm -hmm. who come through the, the judicial mm -hmm. yeah. system. We also go to the communities also. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we can go to a baraza and speak to yes. the baraza, mm -hmm. the justice centers, all these things so that yeah. people know and there's this mind shift mm -hmm. that what we are doing, it's for the benefit of the community, yes. not just for the... So retribution can't be the way to go mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you might, as she said, someone might get in as a chicken thief. Yeah. Mm. Come back out as a robber yeah. with yeah. violence. Yeah. 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 Then the yeah. full heist yeah. now yeah. is you who, <laughs> who, who gets to suffer yeah. Yeah. the full heist. So yeah. Yeah. it's just continued engagement with the public, which yeah. we have been doing with the capacity building, yeah. with the public engagements we've yeah. been doing. And we've seen a shift, even yeah. with the prosecutors, even with the judiciary yeah. and other justice yeah. actors, because we can't do it alone. Yes. If you tell the we probation are. officer yeah. and they accept, yeah. they will tell the chief. They will tell who else, like mm. that, like that. So the message now yeah. is being spread. Yeah. People are not saying you're going yeah. soft. Yeah. No, and prosecutors yeah. are need to be yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you must and get a conviction. Yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah. get it, yeah. Mm. Because at the end of the uh -huh. day, mm. yeah. what we are saying, we are, we are not letting people, and that's, the, that's the, 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 mm. the conversation. Yeah. We're not mm. letting people scot free. Yeah. They actually admit they have to accept responsibility mm. for their action. Yeah. For you to be offered diversion or these other mm. alternatives yeah. that we have, yeah. you ha there has to be an acceptance of responsibility. Mm. That yes, and even an atonement to the mm. victim. Mm. So it's not like, oh, if you're a chicken thief, please go home. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. you, you stole over. someone. You yeah. stole someone's chicken, like and that person is in the in yeah. the, in the yeah. community. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to return? Yes. Would you say sorry yes. about what you did? Will exactly. you change? Yeah. Will there be some form of supervision, yeah. maybe by a probation officer or a yeah. children yeah. officer, yeah. Yeah. like that? So, so that the community now sees yeah. the impact. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. No, I just wanted to pick on what on on what Linda has specified. Yeah. And we need to, as we are changing the hearts and minds of Kenyans and mm -hmm. of all actors, we need to also look at the benefits of these alternatives. Yeah? So for instance, you have stolen my chicken or mm -hmm. my gas cooker, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you, the community wants me to go to jail. Let's remember, the person will serve sentence, but they will not compensate and return that chicken yeah. or that gas cooker. Yeah. Um, but in, when we are dealing with these alternatives, then there is a possibility, and it's a very key, it's a, one of the key benefits, mm -hmm. that uh, as part of the package is to return restore compensate for what you have done yeah so it's it's more restorative it's more it's also beneficial to the to the you know to the person uh, to the victim mm -hmm. or to the person who's uh, who has been offended yeah. and it's holistic it's a holistic approach mm -hmm. and as linda says you've got to atone you've got to and it will be on record mm -hmm. and the odpp for diversion they will keep they will keep the diversion agreement where yeah, you say, yeah. I will not repeat. I will, I, you know, I commit <laughs> to do A, B, C. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So we need to start changing our mindset mm, yeah. so that we be more and more restorative. And we are saying it's not all, all offenses that will be diverted. Mm. It's just a few select yeah. and the diversion policy and diversion guidelines which are on the ODPP website, yeah. uh, and we've tried to put IEC material in, you know, in police stations, mm -hmm. in the courts. People can read, people can understand, or they can visit the, the nearest ODPP office. <laughs> yes, we have billboards that are too expensive. We, do have, we have posters, yeah. po lots which, of posters. which have been mm. spread out, like in our yeah. ODPP offices, we yeah. do have posters, which we also, um, mm -hmm. yeah, even in judiciary, mm -hmm. we come to our mm -hmm. office at Milimani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a judicial office, yeah. but it is full of mm -hmm. posters for oh. diversion yes, and, yeah. yes. and and the rest yes. so with that also people mm -hmm. can come and ask so what is this and yeah. once yes. we do any sensitization we usually also give out uh, these oh, posters and IC materials. IC materials so that when you go outside there you put it in your office yeah. as maybe the chief people will come and yeah. ask you what is this yeah and yes. you become our ambassador to the community yeah. Yeah. and if i might add yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah especially when it comes to offenses committed by children and some of them yes. really uh, they could be really bad yeah mm. but uh you look and you say in in circumstances like that yeah the child is a product mm. of the community yes mm. yeah mm -hmm. so like uh, one particular case that we we we, we had um uh, so so we, we 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 had with the dcs mm -hmm. uh, a child had stolen mm -hmm. uh, but if you now go behind yeah mm. the mother had remarried mm -hmm. the father was being very rough there was lots of many things mm -hmm. that alienated this particular child. Yes. So it is so the, the crime is a result of 
a, a, a vulnerable yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. solution mm. will not be to do take him behind mm. bars where he learned yeah. from other children what mm. how to do us. Mm. And in fact you've had, you know, I mm. think everybody had where people go to prison and they come back with a vendetta to kill people, <laughs> yes. isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So yes. it that, that is if you do not want to create that kind of mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a, a holistic uh, response to yes. this particular yeah, yes. area. Yeah. So this particular boy actually was now, um, uh, through like family counseling, mm -hmm. was taken over by a, an uncle. Ah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, family situations sometimes lead to 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 contribute. Yeah, they are yeah. Like this guy, contribute. this boy yes. elder, trying to break a fight between his sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's just fourteen. Yeah. So a whole new world. But has he has been, killed yeah. somebody. Yeah. yeah, and 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 uh, but then you ask yourself, and I think uh, right mm -hmm. now the new ways in which people are looking at what is what is um, what is the the way in which we should go about when it comes to dealing with ills in the community. Yeah. Um, that was very, uh, let me say, Victorian and colonial. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Lock yeah. you. Yeah? Yes. Punish you. Yes. Yeah. You know, beat you. Yeah. Th that was what they did. Yeah. However, now we know there's so many other psychological factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. If we do that, we, might, we've, you, we lock you in then you, you, because we can't lock you in forever, you yeah. come out. No <laughs> like you. Yeah. <laughs> Radicalize, you come out. Yeah. You radicalize yeah. 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 Actually angry and just ready to kill again. Yes. Yes. And if you yeah. look at how yeah. the, the, the global trend yes. in mm. some of these yes. um, offenses, mm. uh, you see the, I went for something called, the, there's something called the New Chatel Memorandum. On, on counterterrorism for juveniles. Mm -hmm. and one of the things, especially for these low-lying uh, children who mm -hmm. are being radicalized, and how can probably diversion work for mm -hmm. them or liberal gaining work for them mm -hmm. in terms of now also them being the champions going out there mm -hmm. to say that this mm -hmm. is a wrong message yeah. and mm -hmm. please reform for any of the people they mm -hmm. find back in their community. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the conversations that are, even as Kenyans we need to, to, have. to, to, have. to have instead yes. of you see a child or a, a person yes. or an accused person in the society mm -hmm. and they, are beca they become a pariah yeah. and yeah. no one wants bad anything person. to do, that's yeah. a bad yeah. person. Mm -hmm. And they probably all they, they needed was a, just a social background yes. yeah. to this maybe yeah. person yeah. so that you yeah. see maybe, like yeah. in her case, yes. that the parents were very neglectful of this yes. child and yeah. how now you can reintegrate. That's yeah. why I said we can't work alone as ODPP. Yeah. We need partners like you and ODC who mm -hmm. see the need. Mm -hmm. and we also need uh, the other criminal justice uh, oh, actors yes, so that because yes, yeah. I, I wouldn't know that uh, the, the mother remarried or the father yeah. did what <laughs> but you see with from the children uh, from the children of his yeah. yes. now with the report yes. now you yes. see I get to know that there's the whole picture, the, the whole yes. picture yes. of yes. this particular yes. accused person yes. or child who is before mm -hmm. me yes. so I think that that's the that's the beauty of it the, yeah. the collaboration and yes. just rethinking and yes. relearning and I like what the excellence charter is telling yes. us yes. we need to relearn how oh, we yes. do Learn, how to yeah. do business. Oh, yes. yes. I'm also becoming quite an advocate and a champion of uh, legal communication. Because yes. mm. people, you lawyers, <laughs> you people, <laughs> you don't really communicate about, because these are really nice things. Mm. I'm imagining mm. if you took mm. this information out there mm. for people to understand what the immersion mm. is, plea bargain is, and mm. most of all, what uh, restoration is. Yes. To achieve, we stop being a yeah. country that just wants to, mm. to, mm. to fight and see people mm. go down, you know. You and know, then so our resources can be used now for the much mm. uh, serious Wait, offenses yes. where Wait, it's, it's actually needed. needed. Yeah. It's and needed. needed yeah. Yeah. We it can now concentrate needed, yeah. on yeah. that because, of yeah. course, we know crime is there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. People are being killed, mm. people, people yeah. children are being yeah. defiled. All yeah. these yeah. things are happening. So if we can now concentrate now our resources to now ensure. Yeah, but, but um, no, go ahead. Yeah, so so I, I think I think uh, a study done. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact time, but um, the, it was seen that actually most of the people who are behind bars are petty offenders. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and then the, in fact the, that that was what, um, I think the, the the former chief justice was saying that justice needs to be pro poor because. Mm -hmm. Um, the petty offender will not be able to raise the bail. Yes. Yeah, yes. you will not have the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Will uh, will not be able to make an appeal. Yeah. So you find that we are incarcerating people 
mm. who are poor. And then mm. the ones who are rich, they pay. They're, they're able to get out. Mm. Bond the cost of one being poor is so high. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, so, 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 so when we come up with initiatives like this, yeah, yes. we stop, um, uh, uh, what is it called, Criminal, criminalizing, criminalizing poverty. poverty yeah. 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 And we start looking at what are the ills in the mm. community. Mm. I, I even talk to people like in the business community. You need these people. You do not need that petty criminal mm. who stole a chicken to go and be taught how to steal better. Mm. Yeah? Mm. You need to give him the ability mm. to be able to help you to work, perhaps work for you yeah. mm. and make the, your community safe and make mm. your business safe. Mm. So mm. everybody stands to gain from, yes. from this kind of intervention. Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. And allow me to just commend yeah. the ODPP mm. uh, with the partnership of many other development yes. partners, including ourselves. Mm. They've really tried to use radio, you know, during radio talk shows to use their social media their platform CTC to spread the gospel yes. yeah, yeah, so yeah. that you can reach the masses. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. You. It's quite important. I keep saying legal yeah. communication has become something I'm looking at from a different yeah. lens. Because mm. yeah. I, Anita, at this age, I discovered the version of this table wow. and play by game. I never knew wow. about it. So, of course, now I know. Mm. So somebody else will know. Yes. But I think we have a chance to really shout, mm. shout about it. Yes. I really wanted us to talk about legal aid because you mentioned about mm. you know, mm -hmm. criminalizing poverty mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just an overview. Is it happening here in Kenya? Who's the audience? Who, who, who attends to who? I mean, how does it work and where is it? Uh, yeah. So under the plea program, legal aid is um, run by UNDP, who, mm -hmm. who gives grants to several different um, uh, okay. uh, NGOs. NGOs. Yes. Yeah. So one of them is known as CRU. There's also um, uh, Yolo Fida gives legal yeah. aid, Kitwo Chasharia. There's several of them that mm -hmm. actually give legal aid. Yeah. But mm -hmm. even under um, and under the the Enlas, which is a uh, is uh, national legal. What is service. it? Legal aid service, yeah, and last. It's growing and it, it, it's intended to become a right for every Kenyan mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have uh, legal, access to yeah. legal aid. Yeah. It happens in most um, uh, first world countries, but now we are, this is something that is being built. So it was a hand, uh, it was, an, uh, let's say, one of the uh, outcomes of period one. Mm -hmm. It hasn't grown as we had thought it would, mm -hmm. but uh, it's still um, going to remain an area of focus mm -hmm. because. Um, People do need to understand, you know, yeah. because like you, you don't know about diversion or, or plea bargain because you've never been uh, again in court for a crime. No. But the, by the time you get there, you do need someone to tell you this is these are your options. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yes. sit down and advise you based yeah. on yeah. what it is you have done. Mm. Yeah. yeah, what are what is your what is um, uh, the likely mm. what kind of um, what is it called um, sentence mm. are you likely to get? Is mm. it a misdemeanor? Yeah. Uh, is yeah. it a felony? Yeah. What do you need? You need that specific specific uh, advice. So that is now something that will be, that uh, the government is working on the le National Legal Aid Service, but, um, uh, and, and of course civil society is also build, building on that, but there needs to be much more um, on that area. Yeah. Yeah. I'm being told to wind up, I think okay. I need to wind up. Okay. Yeah. But I just wanted to tell you a very uh, small uh, story here about us not understanding things. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about manslaughter earlier, and you're like, why are you calling it manslaughter? Because slaughtering is good in it for manslaughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of communication has to be done mm -hmm. about this. So I need, like I told you, when you do, when you want to talk for an hour, you discover it runs out so it fast. Does, yeah. 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 And Mike wouldn't be kind to me, so I need mm -hmm. to wind up. Mm -hmm. So maybe just to thank you. Yeah. And we keep talking. Yes. I know people are going to ask questions, so we'll just forward them to you or, or get uh, some responses mm -hmm. on their behalf. Okay. If, they, if they want to understand what yes. uh, PLEAD yes. is. Yeah. Just yes. quickly, the future of PLEAD, what is PLEAD to come in? When is it starting? Mm -hmm. What is it going to bring mm -hmm. on board? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, PLEAD 2 is, still, is already in discussion. We're yeah. discussing with the rest of the, um, of the uh, with our counterparts. Yeah. ODPP will be part of it, judiciary. We're now adding others like prisons, uh, mm -hmm. Department of Children's Services, and uh, we continue with WPA uh, uh, and the police. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to, uh, and of course, National uh, Council of Administration of Justice. Mm -hmm. One of the things, of course, that we have understood with PLEAD 1 mm -hmm. is that um, the justice, uh, it's a wheel. Yeah? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to be as strong as your weakest link. Mm -hmm. So basically, it is to support that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that wheel of yeah. justice. Um, and uh, so we are discussing, uh, we are in a process where we hope to have a signature within um, the year, uh, perhaps by the end of November, hopefully yes. we'll be able to do that. This year we'll has been busy. Yeah. It, it yeah. has <laughs> been a good year. <laughs> and then we hope to start, um, start this, uh, just starting on January, January. next year, yes. as PLEAD 1 ends December 
this year. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are the people looking forward? Yeah, we're looking forward to the continued partnership. Yeah. And now also building up on, on the other systems mm -hmm. yeah. now that we, we need to ensure access to mm -hmm. justice. Yeah. We've seen that it has worked with mm -hmm. PLEAD 1. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been able to do quite a lot. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure with PLEAD 2, it will mm -hmm. scale it, it up now. Yes. 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 All right. Asante mm -hmm. Sana. Oh, it's been you. quite thank an you. engaging one. And thank you for thank inviting you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Again and again. This was okay. round one. Yeah. Yeah. So we should come, come back again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. So thank you so much for all those who joined us and uh, listened to our conversation. Uh, we have no time to really engage with your questions today, but you can definitely just drop them in and we'll get time to respond to them. I hope you got what state and non-state actors are doing. And of course, your role in it, it's just to get to understand what's going on so that you're able to help yourself or help somebody in need. And of course, understand what the law does. Again, there was a very interesting call here of we need to work towards restoration more mm -hmm. and less rest less retribution mm -hmm. and see how we can make a better, a kinder society, is that a word? Mm -hmm. A society that is kind to each other because, well, we need each other. Mm -hmm. Is it Ubuntu? Yes, yes. <laughs> Ubuntu. Yeah. yeah, so uh, thank you once again. I wish you a great weekend ahead. Uh, let's catch up again in the week to see what else we shall be discussing. Asante sana and karibu. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, too. Yeah.